What's going on guys and welcome back to Season 9 of NHL 21 Chicago Blackhawks Franchise Mode Series. In case you guys missed the last episode, I'll give you a quick update. Unfortunately, not when the Stanley Cup went to the Vancouver Canucks. First team to win it actually, other than us or the Carolina Hurricanes. We did win the President's Trophy though. We actually had an unreal year. I'm trying to remember exactly how many wins we had. I want to say it was 65 plus. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, we were first round exit. I literally, I still can't get over how that's even possible. Um, I'll show you guys kind of our coaches' stats that we had since the start. Yeah, 65 wins right on the dot when we were first round exit. So, uh, go figure. This year, I don't really care much at all about the regular season success. I just want to, you know, do well in the playoffs. And I think we have a really good shot again. Made some nice trades. We did lose Drysdale to an offer sheet. We've got four first round picks. We're able to actually move them to a lot of nice pieces. So, first line are actually the top six. I think it's the exact same as before. Shane Wright, Kirby Dock, and Patty Kane's on the first line getting plus three, with Meyer, Lambert, and Hall getting a plus five on the second line. You guys can see Wright's stats there, 95 overall, absolute beast. Uh, same goes for Lambert, 93. His hands are actually perfect, 99 everything. Third line, we got Logan Brown, Jost, and Anderson. And then fourth line's Greg Aranko, Hayes, and Kasha. Kasha and Anderson, we actually trade for with one of the first round picks we got from Drysdale. Logan Brown, probably the best free agent signing of the summer, 84 overall, got him for 1.2, and that was actually overpaying him to make sure we got him. Uh, Riley Boquist still the top pair on D. Clark and Hughes now the second pair. Hopefully, you know, Hughes plays really well with us. Another player we got with one of those first rounders. Conklin pitting on the bottom pair. Goaltending is definitely our weak spot, and hopefully it does well. Skinner and Merzlikin is the tandem there. We'll see what happens. In terms of special teams, we still have a plus five power play one, which is awesome. Second unit there is pretty solid as well, getting a plus one. Four men doesn't look too bad. Same with the PK and three men. So, again, we'll see how this team does. On paper, they should do well. HL team, first line there gets a plus three. Same with the first D pair. Uh, goaltending, Rusinski, 77 overall at 21 already. Medium elite. So, I think HL team has a lot of potential as well. But, like I was saying, guys, I don't care if we get 65 wins or if we get 45 wins. I just want to make the playoffs and actually, you know, get past the first round. Have a little bit of playoff success. I feel like we're just going to be getting screwed the last couple years. So, uh, I'll see what our offense, defense, and goaltending ratings are uh, before we get started with this sim. As you can see there, 100 offense. I mean, our offense is pretty stacked. 90 defense, 83 goaltending. As I said, uh, the goaltending is not the best. I actually have had some people asking about the captaincy. It has not changed in at least five years, I think. Um, the captain of this team is still Patrick Kane. Um, at this point, I think he has like literally every record for the franchise. I can show you guys that quick too before we start simming. And then the two alternates there, Hall and Riley, and they've also been on the team for a while. Uh, if they hadn't been on the team for so long, I definitely would have given it to like Doc by this point, or maybe even Wright or Lambert, but I mean, there's really no reason to strip the veterans of their letters. I'm pretty sure we won all three cups with those three guys on the team, so it'd be kind of just disrespectful in my eyes. So like I was saying, I'll give you a quick look at the Chicago Blackhawks franchise records, and yeah, Patty Kane has literally every single one except for seasons, but I'll tie Makita for that with 22 this season. Hopefully they get the tiebreaker to Kane, that way he'll literally have everything except for Chelios penalty minutes and then the goalie records, but I'll have to wait and see. So let's get started here with the sim. Again, hopefully it goes well. This is kind of funny guys, St. Louis is trying to trade us Lucas Reichel back along with a third round pick for a second, Kaminsky who's a medium potential starting goalie and a fifth, but we already have 100 offense, so no reason to make this trade. So we're at the end of December here, guys. They 2012 and 6 record, which is pretty good. Nothing insane. Again, I don't really care if we get 65 wins. It's clearly it doesn't matter. Uh, we're third in the division, so we have a playoff spot. Two-point lead there on the Avalanche. Three games in hand, which is huge. Um, Hall there, 44 points, 38 games, so over a point per game. I want to take a quick look at Stuart Skinner's stats as our starting goalie, because he's been the backup for like the past seven or eight years, I think. And if he can just be a you know decent starter at his side, that's huge for us. 0.876 save percentage, 3.46 goals against. Yeah, that's not great. Um, whereas Lincoln's stats aren't much better. I think ideally we'll actually have to get a true starter. Probably wait till the deadline because it'll be easier in terms of the cap room. But yeah, I think these guys are doing that great right now. So another trade deadline here, guys. The pretty solid record, 34, 20, and 8. Now we're still not first in the division as the Jets are having an unreal season. Um, as you can see, they have 94 points already, basically clinched a playoff spot. We're 76, almost 20 behind them in second. Hall there still playing pretty well with 70 points in 62 games. I assume the Jets got to be, yeah, they're the best team in the NHL right now, which makes a lot of sense. So, uh, David from the deadline, like I said, I think our number one priority will be finding a starting goaltender. Now, they have to be cheap. I'm thinking 50% retained and at the deadline. Should be able to pull it off. Um, yeah, they're both still under 0.9. Doesn't really matter which one uh, we use in the trade. Probably just whoever has more value of everyone 
uh, the other team likes. Could also add a bottom pairing D-man. Uh, maybe move somebody like Kasha, who's kind of like too good to be playing on the fourth line. See what's out there. And the top 10 players available in the trade block, you got Marco Rossi, 90 overall, but only one year left. Same goes for Sam Reinhardt, Jake for Tannen, uh, Kokaniemi, Tillen Strong was now on the Ducks, Jared McCann, so a few Minnesota Wild players, Jake Gensel, Oliver Wallstrom, uh, Valerie Medvinov, and then Cody Glass, who I think we actually almost went for last year, but instead we went after Tyson Joss. So looking at this, I don't see a goalie. We'll have to hopefully find one on the trade block somewhere else. So if you guys want to make a big trade to Philadelphia Flyers for Carter Hart, have them retaining 50% of his salary, making him worth only three and a half million. You can see save percentage there below 0.9, but 17 wins. Philadelphia is not uh, too good of a team right now. Also Tyson Forster here, 27 years old, 82 overall. He's just going to be on the fourth line, replacing Andre Kasha, who again, he's fourth liner, but he's got some decent value. It would be a top six for them. First round pick, 20-30. Merzl can just there for the goalie spot. Values quite heavily on our side. We'll see what Philly says here. Trades rejected. Not really entertain the salary. Okay, so if Philly doesn't want to do that trade, what's kind of crazy, a goalie with less value who's actually higher rated won the Vesna last year. Is that guy I mentioned in the last episode on the Winnipeg Jets, uh, Galvin, 2589. Look how low the value is. He's making less than a million bucks, 43 wins. I'm sure Winnipeg being a good team in front of him helps, but I mean, I wonder if we could do this even for. Literally, Merzlikin and Cash are like the values on our side, crazy amount. Let's see what they say here. It's going to go through. I wonder if we could actually bring back a fourth line forward as well. And I mean, we're, we're trading a fourth line forward there for their elite starting goalie. Now, he is going to need a new contract after the season, but that's fine. Uh, we'll worry about that in the future. Now, the forward I want most on their team is this Silverthorn guy, 19 years old, 81 overall, making a million bucks the next three years. Uh, nice and cost controlled, could play in our bottom six, but... We'll put the value a good deal on their side. So um, he's better than anyone will get with that first rounder. So I'll actually include the first round back. And you can see we still have St. Louis 2031 first round pick, which has a ton of value. So uh, if we ever need to make a big splash, we can do that. So we'll see if this goes through now. And it does. So I think that's a huge trade for us. So the trade deadline is now complete, guys. I was trying to make a trade for a defenseman. I'm not even lying when I say, I mean, I had like an hour in-game time left. And it kept getting cancelled out by like trade offers coming in so annoying. I like I mean, obviously trying to work through something. I was gonna try and get Ryan Ellis from Montreal Canadiens, but uh didn't end up happening. I'm not sure if we could have pulled it off, but I mean I'm sure we could have for the right price, but whatever. Um so looking at it, Buffalo gets Yoki Harju back. Um Alexander Romanov goes to LA. Uh let's see anything else big going down. I think our trade probably was the biggest of the day, getting one of the best goalies in the league. And Galvin from the Winnipeg Jets, especially from our deficient rival. I feel like that's definitely going to make them worse. Uh, Yolabi there goes to LA. Sam Reinhardt goes to Washington. That's actually pretty big as well, along with Robert Hay. But yeah, really not too, too much action at this deadline. Right there does show the Sam Reinhardt trade as one of the big ones, along with Romanov to LA, but not our trade. Very interesting. Uh, Frederick, I know, is a power forward. Sayan overall, 31 years old. Could get him for free. Um... Honestly, I'll give, I'll give him a claim. I mean, he's a decent player to get for free. Let's trade the line, guys. Here's an update look at our team. Top nine forwards haven't changed, but fourth line now has Silverthorne, and he's actually getting a plus one, which is nice to see. Uh, now, in terms of goal tightening, that's the big upgrade. Galvin, 89 overall. He's also 25, so he can still get better. I feel like after this season, how could he not get better? I like the fact that we took him from our rival in the Jets. Let's see how this works out. And we're now at the end of the season with a 49-24-9 record. So one win shy of 50, which kind of sucks. We actually beat the Jets in the last game of the regular season in overtime. Uh, finished second in the division behind the Jets. 107, they have 118. And it looks like, oh no, Devils actually going to win the President's Trophy 119. I feel like losing their starting goalie definitely hurt them. Taylor Hall's the leading scorer there. 91 points, 82 games. So no one really went off this year. Hall's also dropped in rating to 87, but he is getting up there in age now at 37. Right at 87, Meyer 85, so still a really good year for him. Just kind of quietly does well. Lambert 84, another over point per year game. Doc 79 is not bad. Kane 76 at 40. 40 goals as well for the 40 year old. Ridiculous. AHL potential, but look at the puck skills, the shot. There's always still ridiculous. Even offensive defense awareness, I think, are really important. Same with Poise, very, very good. His physical is just terrible, which makes sense. The guy's 40 years old. Uh, Boquist 61, Jost, Luke Hughes, Riley. I think everyone's pulling their weight. The Silverthorn guy, 42. Not bad at all. Uh, so we'll take a look at that goalie. 57 wins. A lot of that's with the Jets, though. 0.902 at 2.86. We'll have to actually look at his stats to see how he did with us. So he went 14-3-1 with a 0.907 at 2.68. So yeah, definitely a big upgrade there. 
um, over Merzlikin. I think Skinner does a lot better in the backup role. So I'm liking what I'm seeing here from the NHL team. Quick look at the AHL team. Dan Coven, 54. Yeah, all right. So the AHL team doesn't really have a lot to look forward to, which is okay because, you know, we're going for the Stanley Cups. So you okay if the AHL team's not going to do that great. Although, yeah, our goalie, the Rusinski, I'd expect better from him, honestly. High 70 uh, elite potential. Take a look at the entire league here. I know we're not going to have the scoring leader, but curious to see who it is. Karn Bedard, 123. Zegers, Perfetti, Holtz, all 110. Line A, 109. Aho, Shifley, Yamamoto, uh, Ken Johnson there. Karn Bedard had 83 goals. Oh my god. I don't even know. Who's the last guy to put up 80? He averaged over a goal a game. That's got to be a... I'm checking this. It's got to be like a Gretzky record. So 83 goals in a season puts Karn Bedard fifth all time behind Gretzky's 92, Gretzky's 87, Hall's 86, and Lemieux's 85. Pretty good company to be in. That is, that is so ridiculous. Look at his shot. 94 power, 98 accuracy. That is just unreal. So take a look at the standings next. We know we got second in the division where we finished the entire league. Uh, third in the entire league though. So yeah, we still had a very, very good year. Um, seven teams, 100 plus points. Taking a look at it, it looks to be the top 16 teams that make the playoffs. I'd like to see that. And last place, the Dallas Stars, 60 points. I feel like this is the first time Dallas has gotten last. So we get started with the playoffs next here. Um, we'll be playing the Minnesota Wild, the sec second seed versus the third seed. I believe they still have Kaprizov leading that team, although I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll have to take a look at their lines there to find out. But I feel pretty confident, especially with the addition of a true elite starting goaltender on this team, that we can make it past the first round of this year. At least I'm hoping last year I was pretty confident too. So yeah, let's see here. I don't see Kaprizov. He actually might have left. My bad. You know what? That's right. I think I do remember him being traded now. Uh, Kovanov, 88 overall. Third round pick. Wow, he turned out pretty good for them. Rossi, 90. Svech, 89. Um, okay, so the top six is solid. And kind of on the fourth line is interesting. Defensively, Lambos 85, and then nothing. Three guys are 70s. Um, okay, so Corby Salah really is a starter there, 83. McKenzie, they're showing 77. Um, I'm not sure how this team did as good as they did. Like, how much were uh, out of the regular season? But they were third, so they, yeah, they had 47 wins. I just saw they had two less wins than us. I'm not sure how. If I asked, like fielded that team, I would think maybe make the playoffs. Regardless, first two games at home in Chicago. Let's see how we do. 6-3 win. 5-4 win. Okay, here we go. Let's get a clean sweep. Not even have to worry here in the first round. That'd be pretty nice. And 3-2 win, followed by 6-3 win. Let's go. And the second round here, guys, are matching up with the National Predators. They got a pretty sick first line. Tolvin and Kunit and Michkov. Michkov, similar to Bedard. Insane shot. 99 wrist shot accuracy. A bit more power as well. 95s. Surprised he wasn't putting up 80 goals. Maybe just, I don't know, not playing with the right line mates or something. Dylan Cousins, 89 second line center. So yeah, the offense looks pretty good. I like ours better still. Defensively, this Corey Hayes guy is 88. Ryan Merkley there. Um, it's not bad. Ours is still better. Matt Murray, 81 starting goalie. They got 73 backups. So another team that's not too bad, but they just don't compete with us. So uh, we'll see how we do here matching up with them. They only had 41 wins. So I think they're actually a wild card team. And you know what? Speaking of that, I want to compare ourselves to Nashville right here and see. Um, they actually went game seven their first round. Not only Nashville stats, but I want to see what ours look like. Um, with the addition of the new goalie. So we had 100 offense before, still do. 90 defense still, and 90 goaltending now. I believe before it was 83. And yeah, Nashville, 91, 90, 75. So uh, we're better than them in every single way. But defense, actually, we're somehow tied, which seems a bit strange, but whatever. So first two games here at home in Chicago. Let's see how we do. 6 nothing win, 4-3 win. Let's go. See if we can uh, get another sweep here. Going to Smashville, 5-3 win. 7 nothing win. Let's go. 8-0 right now through the first two rounds of the playoffs. The team is looking good. Hungry here for our fourth Stanley Cup. It will be our fifth Stanley Cup final appearance. And we have the LA Kings now in the Western Conference Final. I believe this was a Western Conference Final back in 2013, something like that. Um, so we'll see what that team's looking like. Patty Kane, 40-year-old Patty Kane, 14 points in eight games right now. I love it. The captain's still getting it done, even at the old age. Let's see what that LA Kings team is looking like. Raquel, Turcock first line center makes sense. Cole, Cole Cools, is that how you say his name? 13 goals, 9 assists through the playoffs, 94 overall. He was actually the made-up player who went first overall in 2021. Beast of a player, Tarasenko Byfield, that 1-2 punch down the middle. Okay, they have 570s though, and he bomb six their offense, and that's not good. Um, defensively, it's all low to mid-80s, so it's got depth, but no real beast. Samson is the starting goalie. 
We did actually win our third Stanley Cup with him in net, but uh, it was not too, too crazy. So again, on paper, we should be the better team. Uh, let's see if we can get through the LA Kings now. And, and like I said, make it to our fifth Stanley Cup final appearance. We're currently 8-0 through the playoffs. The Kings there are 8-6. First game, we're down 2-1 the first. Now 3-2 for them. Joss gets one. 5-4. Wright and Brown try to climb back. Unfortunately, not enough. So we drop our first game of the playoffs. And it took us until the conference final to do so. So I'm not too worried, but I'd hope to at least get one win here um, in one of our two games at home starting off this series. If not, oh, down 0-2 would be pretty tough. Down one nothing, Turcotte down, t tied up 1-1 with Kane. And there we go, Justin Hayes, big third period, giving us the lead. So, series tied one apiece. If we can get at least one winning LA, I'm still feeling pretty good. Make it a best of three. So here you go, game number three. And it's 2-2, two -two. Kane and right for us. Tarasenko cools for them. 4-3, Jost Anderson, Lynn for them. I hold on there, Jost again. 5-3 win, okay. So we got the 2-1 series lead. This next game's pivotal. Either we go up 3-1 or it's tied 2-2. Two two. This is, uh, I don't know, this could be the series here. Game number four in LA. Let's see if we can get it done. First period, 3-0. Let's go. Boquist, Hall, Luke Hughes. 4-2, Kane adds one. Benson, Tarasenko for them. And 6-5, they come back. We hold on. Uh, right and Kane there get a couple of big goals. So like I was saying, we now have the 3-1 series lead. Pressure is all on LA. They have to win the next three games here. Uh, they want to take us out of these playoffs. They're 9-9. We're 11-1. Clearly the better team so far through these playoffs. We can't get cocky. So game five. Hughes and Romanov 1-1. Nothing in the second. That's right. They picked up Romanov. And there we go. Kane and Jost lead for them. We are moving on to the Stanley Cup final. Like I said, this will be our fifth Stanley Cup final in nine years. Talk about a dynasty. I mean, this team just so good throughout. And of course, we have the New Jersey Devils there in the Stanley Cup final. The team with the literally the face of the NHL. I was hoping to be Shane Wright. It's Carver Dart. He's got 83 goals in a regular 82 game season. Patty Kane, though, 22 points in 13 games at 40 years old. That might be the story of the playoffs. You know, if you were trying to look and see what TSN was talking about. Um, definitely, I think it's like the dynasty versus kind of the new emerging team. So they have, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Jack Hughes is a 93. Basically perfect hand. So that's you just setting up a dart, all those goals. But dart in the middle. Holtz there on the right wing. He's also a sniper. Um, he's actually got better hands though than shooting, which is interesting. Player type 2A forward. I got to make that sniper. Um, Bemstrom, Nugent Hopkins, Jesper Bratz in 89. Connor Zeri there, third line center. His year. Um, fourth line's not bad. Defensively, Dalene just leading that D. The rest of their 80s, which is good enough when you have Dalene. Um, Blomquist, 83, and then Valiket, 67. Uh, he's got one win, one game played. Um, if he goes in for any reason, we're winning the game, but um, I don't see that happening too much. So I like our chances here against the Devils. If our top line, if our second line, if one of our lines can just match up with that first line, doesn't even have to score, just shut it down. I'm feeling pretty good. Now, I am curious what the Devils' stats look like. The goalie's you know, stat for them will definitely be skewed because it's 67 backup. Yeah, 75, but 99, 90, 75. So um, we're basically even according to the overalls. We have one higher offense, same defense. And like I said, uh, if you don't include the backup goalie, though, I think our starting goalie is still like six red in there, something like that. And the Devils actually, that's right, did win the Presence Trophy. They took it just from the Jets by one point. So this first game from New Jersey, 1-1, Anderson for us, Brat for them. Oh, no, 5-1. Look at the flow there on Johnson or probably pronounced Janssen, 5-1 loss. We actually had the same amount of shots as them, and uh, they just, wow, 5-1 to one loss in the first game. That sucks. Again, only our second loss here of the playoffs. Hopefully we can go back there and win the second game. Otherwise, like I said, in the cup conference final, I'm not going to be good going down to nothing. Bedard, there we go, Meyer, and let's go. Kind of same thing for us. Riley Brown right. We get a big period there. Take the lead. So, Series is tied now, one apiece, and we're heading home to Chicago. As long as we can take at least one game in Chicago, I don't feel too bad about this. If we could take two, that'd be obviously even better. Here we go, third game, 1-1, one, one. Hughes for them. Or sorry, Luke Hughes for us, Cairo for them. I just realized it's Luke Hughes versus Jack Hughes, that's pretty sick. Uh, let's see, Johnson, for, oh, they get two, Johnson and Dalene. And they get another one there from Connor Zeri, okay. So, we're down 2-1, to one. again, Pretty similar to the conference final. We can't, or they're the one with the lead, but uh, we cannot afford for them to go up three to one here. We have to tie this up. Come on, second game at home. We got to take at least one of these games in Chicago. 0 0. 1 1, Hall and Johnson. Wow, 3 1, Brown Hiss here. So 
Not looking good. We're down three to one. We have to win these next three games straight. Again, on paper, I still like our team a lot more. I think we have just as much, you know, high end firepower, but we have more depth, which I think, you know, should pay off in the playoffs. So far, it's not down one, nothing. One, one. Come on, we need a big third here for our playoff hopes to stay alive. Let's go. Who is it? Pitten, <laughs> the third pairing D, the game winner. That's always the guy who comes through. One you need him most in the playoffs. All right, so we're alive. Have to win the next two straight. We actually won that one in New Jersey. Didn't win a single game at home in Chicago in this round. Game six has got to be it. Come on. Down one. Bedard for them. One, one. Cues for us. Big third period now. 2-2 two, two right in his year. Going to overtime. We need a hero. We're getting outshot badly, so our goalie's playing well. Power play. This could be it. Oh, wow, they kill it off. Come on. Hero, bring us to game seven. Another power play. Come on. We have... We have a plus five power play that's stacked with 90s. Twice they get shut out here in the overtime. Oh no. Oh, are you kidding me? Brazos Dalina was pumping his tires. I mean, respect. New Jersey had a guy put up 83 goals in the regular season. That's who it took to beat us. Six games in the Stanley Cup final. Lost game six in OT. I mean, we couldn't win a game at home. If we could just win one game at home in Chicago, could have went to game seven, then anything could have happened. I can't believe that, but... I respect two New Jersey Devils there winning the Stanley Cup. We still have one more year left to try and win that fourth Stanley Cup again. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Four Stanley Cups in 10 years. I feel like we've already got the dynasty winning three straight, but I'd really just like to add one more onto it. Vegas there picking first overall via St. Louis. Wow. So that's actually the pick we traded them uh, that we got from Jamie Drysdale for Elias Anderson and Andre Kasha. And then of course we flipped Kasha for the elite goalies. So Yes, we're missing on the first overall, but I still don't feel that bad about it. Like, we got an 87 center and elite goalie. And yeah, it's just five regular medium leads. If there was like a franchise guy, it would definitely hurt a lot more. But since that's not the case, I'm honestly fine with it. And the fact that, you know, St. Louis is picking first, the first round pick we still have from them, probably just going to keep going up in value. Patty Kane does not call it quits. He's going to play in our 10th and final season at 41 years old. I respect it. Jonathan Huberdeau there plays his entire career with Florida. Finished with 1166 in 1274. That's insane. Goudreau as well. Entire career with Calgary. 1,129 points in 1,200 games played. Carlson there. Also retires of Flame. Andrews Lee retires um, on the LA Kings. You got Jeff Skinner there. Dougie Hamilton with the Red Wings. Skinner actually returned to Carolina. Trocek. William Carlson. Andre Palat. Ryan Johansson. Tyler Toffoli. Mikel Granlin. Dezingle. Charlie Coyle. Jason Zucker. Zach Hyman. Uh, so again, some just everyday NHLers. See if any big name goalies retire. Brain Holpe is a pretty big name. Peter Morazic, Malcolm Subban, Louis Deming. That's kind of about it, though. Um, obviously, there's less goalies, so there's gonna be less uh, big name goalie retirements. But um, very interesting to see that Kane is not retiring. He wants another cup, so uh, it just makes me even hungrier now. So right here, guys, make a big trade for second overall, which Vancouver has on the block, offering them this Tom's prospect we got last year, I believe. Third round, he's got melee potential. First round pick in 2031, Kaminsky, meet elite starter. Hayes there, just basically, uh, they can talk to him for like five days early. See what they say to this. Trades rejected. Okay, we could definitely offer them a little bit more. Obviously, we still have the St. Louis Blues uh, draft pick in 2031, which is why I'm um, fine trading ours. Basically, I'm thinking we'll be tight against the cap. So second overall picks, probably a really good player to have uh, to kind of be cap friendly and also just play well. Conklin, 78. We probably don't really need him at this point. So Conklin, Kaminsky, first rounder, Tom for second overall. Trade rejected. I mean, that's probably... I think there was one guy we had that was a bit better than Tom's um, in terms of meme leap players. Uh, call provide there. Yeah, you can see he's a little bit better. This is our best offer. Not going to happen, though. Going to see if Dallas will give a seventh round pick for signing rights to Kevin Hayes. He's 37 years old now. Don't really see me bringing him back. Trade rejected. Okay, so... Honestly, everyone else, I'm kind of fine just risking in terms of holding on to. Now, we don't have a pick until the fifth round, uh, which really, really sucks. And I just realized I made a goof here in our final draft. I totally forgot to check uh, gems and everything, but hopefully there weren't any good. No gems left. Uh, potential here. 250-50 medium elites. Okay, let's go with the uh, defenseman first. Medium 7th D, that's rough. Try the goalie now, Griffin Ray, Mississauga. Medium fringe, wow, our 
Our skirts aren't looking too good here in the final draft. Second Lions pick of the draft. So far, both have been quite underwhelming. Um, do we take a chance on Schneider, Lucic, Tanaka? Let's go with Schneider here. From Amuski, just like Crosby, Lafreniere, me on bottom six. Our last draft is the worst one of the entire franchise series by far, but luckily only one season left, so they'd had to be like a really good prospect to even have enough, you know, trade value, whatever, to be worth trading, let alone making our team. And this sucks, guys. Our associate coaching's a new contract. As you can see, he's got an A- overall, which is really good. Unfortunately, I only have a million and a half uh, to resign him. He wants 2.3. I'll try giving him the 2.3, although we don't have the money. And because it's during the resign phase, it won't let me go over, even though owner mode's turned off. But um, luckily, we have a really good head coach, hopefully makes up for it. Our another reassigned phase here, guys, with 20.5 million in cap space. Luckily, we have our two star players, Wright and Lambert, locked up. $9 million, honestly, for them is such a steal. They'd be making like 13, 14 otherwise, so uh, we're saving like four to five on each, which is enough money for another star player, essentially. Uh, the best player at the resigned Taylor Hall there, 8 overall at 37 years old, was our leading scorer last year, wants 10-5. That's tough uh, for a 37 year old. Now, I said I would always keep Kane until he retired. 40 years old, 82 overall, HL potential. He wants 5.5. Uh, does not want an extension, so we'll try 5 million first. If it doesn't work, obviously we can just offer him more, but we are saving money already. Um, Hayes at 37, I said. I just you know didn't want to bring back. Greg Ranko, if he's cheap, I'll bring back. 1.4. I was actually on a cheaper deal. I thought he was a pretty good deal last year. Um, I don't mind bringing him back. I like the loyalty there. Take a bit of a deal. Kovalev, 2381, will be making our defense top six. Uh, cannot afford him, though, at that price. So we'll have to qualify him. I hope nobody, uh, you know, swoops in and takes him from us. Two 26-year-olds saying, I overall D-man. You got to hope one of them grows to an 80. 2.5. They're both pending UFA, so I can't qualify. I mean, I'm guessing I'm going to make an offer here on Anderson. One year at 1 million. Uh, Pen, we're just going to lose there to free agency, unfortunately. Now, one weird one is Morgan Riley. 85 overall now, was making 11 million, been with us since the start basically. He wants eight. I think I can get a better D-man for that money. Uh, so now it'll be time to actually give somebody a new letter. Who will wear the A? Will it be Wright, Doc, Lambert? One of those three for sure. Hull, leading score, it's tough not to bring him back. Now he does want to stay with the team, so maybe we could do one year, nine million, uh, which I think is about what he was making before. And then that goalie we traded for, I feel like we can't lose him for nothing. Otherwise, it's a bit of a waste. Plus, he with him, we were really good. 9.7. Can we get him cheaper? One year, 9. I mean, we literally just need him for one year here, this final cup run. I think Lambert needs a new contract after, after this anyways. We'll try one year, 8. See what he says. So we'll get the big, you know, contracts out of the way, then do the AHL stuff. And as you can see, the associate coach said, I was going to sign your offer, but you don't have enough money. So we'll have to try and re-sign him in the summer before anyone else gets him. Now, Hall rejected her offer. We'll have to offer him a bit more money. Now, Kane actually came back on a bargain deal. Really surprised by that. As I said, he didn't want an extension. Greg Ranko also came back. Good to see. Galvin says he wants to test free agency. Anderson also wants to test free agency. Okay. So we'll try offering all those guys like an extra 500k. And do 9.5 for Hall. And we'll try 8.5 for Galvin. And there you go. Taylor Hall's coming back. Galvin, though, still wants to test free agency. We have 15.5 million. I mean, he's 25. Like, if he wants... The thing is, he's cheaper, though, on less years. So I feel like it'd be easier to sign him to one, but he's proving to be a bit of a stickler. Um, nine mil for two. And there we go. Galvin did accept that contract. So still have 7.5 million there uh, to get a defense and replace Riley. And I think... Actually, you know what? There's somebody else bigger to resign. Elias Anderson. He's actually dropped to an 84. How much does he want? 3.8 there. Three years. Um, I think with him we could wait because there's always some really good steals on forwards like him, but we still might, you know, bring him back out of free agency. Now, if we actually just look at forwards, I think, is it sorted by overall? I believe so. Pretty set. Like right now we'd have a couple 79s and Greg Ranko's our fourth line, which isn't bad at all. All right, now the free agency period here, guys. Curious to see who's available in the final free agency for this series. Uh, Jordan Greenway, 89 overall, wants 16.5. Oh my gosh. Uh, Dubois wants 14. Caulfield wants 13.5. Wow. Look at some of the contracts here. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, so again, I think we're going to try and find some budget forwards kind of a month in. Uh, Goaltending-wise, I'm curious just what's available. Wow. 
the highest rated goalies in 84. When I was looking actually for a goalie to trade for, it literally was the guy we wanted or, or Carter Hart. I think they were the only two that were like 88 plus, maybe a scare off as well for third, but really no good goalies deep into franchise. Wallstead, I think actually was also an 88 and surprisingly his value was quite low. Um, I think it might have been because he was making so much money. Um, okay, that guy's an RFA, but um, still was very kind of curious to see. I thought any good goalies available free. Um, 2061, this is actually a guy I had, but I let him go just because didn't really need a spot for him. So, yeah, really no one there worth signing. Uh, let's check all skaters two-way. Hoffman, 2370 low leads. Uh, definitely going to make an offer on him. Same with Soup, 56 low lead. Ovechkin here. 25, 77, medium top six. Let's see if we can add him to the team. Stall, 20, 74, low top six, pretty good. Can, 25, 77. Again, most of these guys will just be AHL players, but there's the odd chance they randomly grow in the summer and make the NHL team. This defenseman here, Sward, 25, 77, medium top four. That's actually pretty solid. Same as Sonata, 21, 68. Also gonna make an offer on Nielsen and Zykov, as I do think I let go of a few AHL D men. So, I think we're good there um, in terms of the seven and a half million. Obviously, our offense is stacked, so, so I'd just be looking for a defense and replace Riley, Demello. What do you want? Thirteen five. Um, so I guess it'd probably be like an eighty-six. Marino, Cider, Romanov, McAvoy. Uh, Romanov, Cider, both younger. They're kind of both slightly out of our price range, though. Top four defensive pairings. Top four defensive pairings for sure for Romanov. And he's a left-handed defenseman, just like Riley. Honestly, though, we're probably end up having to get Marino or McAvoy, because I don't think we can afford the other two. So the Sonata guy signed with us, one of the better uh, two-way dudes, same as Supra. I actually didn't really offer any of them extra money, is literally what they're asking. Uh, we got a good goalie coach there for the NHL. He had A-plus teaching, and actually, I think, C-minus uh, for coach influence. Usually, if they have A-plus teaching, the coach influence isn't great at all, like a D, basically. Um, and it looks like all of these two-way guys are coming back, so... Um, worst case, they're just, you know, helping the AHL team. Best case, could be a big part of a trade for us. So we had about a week, guys. As you can see, Ellis and McAvoy, the top two defensemen still available. We can afford both now. Um, McAvoy younger, so definitely want him more than Ellis. Just need him for one year. So let's try... Honestly, let's do like 7 million for one year. Uh, let's still leave us about 500k there in cap. We'll go room plus two. Uh, when the summer's over, usually we'll have about a couple million just from setting a couple guys down to the AHL, and wow, look at that, and McAvoy took a day, already signed with us. The next year, guys, I'm actually signing this Markkinen goalie, 27 years old, 78 overall, basically just to be our AHL starter in case we trade the elite potential guys currently in the AHL, or I might actually even make him the backup NHL goalie and trade Stuart Skinner. We'll see if Florida gives us Toronto's fourth round pick here for Stuart Skinner, basically kind of a cap dump, 1.5, they say yes. I think he actually walks in immediately becomes our starter. Like I was saying, the reason I did this Rusinski's now an 80, he's got the back of roll. He'll probably be an 81, I think, by the start of the season. Skinner's 82, saves us like 600K. And then if you look at Florida, like I said, that's pretty funny. Their next best goal is a 74. And right now, guys, trying to dump four of our contracts off on the Rangers. Uh, they're a seller. They throw on pick those on the block for some reason. Norkfist is actually making over a million, 25, 76. This guy's 24, 71, kind of rough. Uh, 2165, medium bomb six. 24, 72, low leads, actually not terrible, but. Um, it's actually kind of like just the next worst. They say no. Now I noticed they actually have our third round pick, so we could try and get that back. If not, I'll just, you know, keep going lower and lower. And they say yes, actually. And now the reason for this is I want to sign a few guys out of free agency. And as you can see, it's August 1st, so I simmed through a month. And already, tons of good deals are here. Kyle Foot, 81 overall defenseman, only wants 825k. Absolute steal, so I'm going to make him that offer. Also, I feel like we need a couple forwards. This Raquel guy, 25 years old, 82 overall, wants 1.5. Still has time to grow, I mean, that's just a great, great contract. So I'm offering them 1.65. I think that gives us about 1.2 million left. Now there's this um, Mueller guy here I'd like to get, but I'm not sure we have the money. Athens CEO I think is kind of like the second guy I'll go for. So I'm gonna wait and see like what exactly money it shows. And there we go, Cal Foot accepts. So I think he'll be a bomb pair defenseman for us. The Raquel guy also says yes. So that is awesome. Like I said, 25 years old, eight overall for free. Um, wow, it's only showing us 900K. So we'd have to wait till the fall to change that. Athanasia wants 1.4, so I don't think we can get him, but maybe somebody else. And Buffalo just made me an offer. Kyrie a fourth and a sixth for Conklin and a medium starter goalie. Um, if Kyrie's decent, this would actually be a good trade for us. 81 overall. I think I can get that for free. 
Conklin's potential to be an AD, plus he just has the most value for everybody, so I'm going to say no. Islanders want to give us Michael Rasmussen. Obviously, I'm interested in that as a Red Wings fan. Curious, what does he look like nine years in? 79 overall. Never mind, not interested. And now guys, I'm actually setting cap seats for the next year. Like I said, with Riley gone, we need to give a new A. The game automatically gave it to Wright. And although he is the best player on the team, I think, you know, Kirby Doc's been here three years longer than Wright. Probably, honestly, the future captain of the team once Kane finally retires, in which case Wright will get his A. When Hall retires, the other A will probably go to Boquist, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, Doc right now deserves it. And to start the season now, guys, so I'll show you what this roster is looking like. Honestly, I'm very optimistic again. I think we have a shot at the Stanley Cup. A very well-rounded roster for sure. So the top six is the same. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Now, Patty Kane's down to an 80, but he still gets the plus three. So he should be playing like an 83. I noticed he'll have like a 98 wrist shot accuracy. So that's why he's putting up, you know, 40, 50 goals a year still. Four-star hands. Defense, the awareness is good, the rest sucks. Still decent skater, 99 poise, 90 offensive awareness, 95 discipline, so he knows what to do. The physical is trash, but we just need to score goals. That second line still getting that plus five. The bottom six is really solid now. Uh, Silverthorne's an 84, Jost 87, Greg Ranker 82 getting a plus one. This Airhoff guy, Brown and Raquel getting a plus one on the fourth line. Defensively, our top pair is actually Hughes and Clark now, both getting plus one. McAvoy and Boquist on the second pair getting a plus one. Then we have Kovalev and Foot. On the bottom pair, so everyone's an 80 plus, solid top four. In goal, you got Galvin, who's an 88 starter. Rusinski's backing him up, he was in the AHL, but immediately potential. I figured he'd grow, which is why I traded Stuart Skinner. So, I really like the look at the NHL team. Like I said, I think it's very balanced. Uh, we still have a ton of assets to trade too. We have the St. Louis Blues first rounder, which has a ton of value. A couple medium elite potential skaters and the goalie. AHL team, quick look there, you can see top blinds got plus three. Uh, the defense is all like mid 70s. Goaltending got that 78 I signed starting. So, like I said, very optimistic for next year. Um, we've been, you know, pretty unlucky, I'd say. Three Stanley Cups, two Stanley Cup final losses most recently. Hopefully the 10th and final year is our year. So take a look here at the offense, defense, goaltending stats. And let's see, we have 99 offense, 91 defense, 89 goaltending. So pretty much the same we had um, after the deadline last season. That brought us all the way to the Cup final. So hopefully this team can do the same. And like I mentioned, guys, the next episode will be the last one for this series. So Hopefully we can go with the Stanley Cup, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.